The Green Bay Packers get more evidence that they are cheated by the NFL media. What do I mean by that? I'm going to break that down for you guys in this video, but I also don't want you to mishear me because at the end of the day, there are two types of teams. There's the teams that get a whole lot of respect out there by social media, and then they cannot go out there and perform and back up what everybody's talking about, um, you know, in regards to social media. And then there's the teams like the Packers that may not get the type of respect that they deserve by media, but come game day, the Packers go out there and they perform and that is what matters. So at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what social media says. If anything, it just gives the Packers maybe some extra ammunition lot for their locker room, whatever. So NFL scouting department for Bleacher Report, they put out some grading systems for what teams did this offseason prior to the this upcoming 2024 NFL draft. We're going to start with the Chicago Bears and what they said and had to say about the Chicago Bears. Okay. And then they also graded them. Okay. So we're going to go over all of that. So key losses for the bears. And it's important to look at these because this is in the NFC North and, and obviously to take a closer deep dive, look into this key losses for the, the bears. If you call it a key loss, they lost Justin Fields as Packer fans. We really wanted Justin Fields to stay there in Chicago because we were not um, threatened by his performance there out on the football field. The bears fans certainly seem to think that he was their quarterback for the future. They lose Deontay Foreman. Again, that's just this old veteran presence. They lost wide receiver Darnell Moody. Um, those were some key losses for this team. What were the, some key additions for the Bears this offseason? They went in, signed um, Keenan Allen. They trade for Keenan Allen, wide receiver. The guy is older, but he's still so valuable. And, and when you start coupling him with DJ Moore, um, and Packers are going to have their hands full when you when you couple Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, and then what they were add, able to add. You've got um, their tight end Gerald Everett that they are bringing in. Key, another key addition there, Jonathan Owens for X Packer. There comes in to Chicago. So yes, remaining cap space for the Chicago Bears. They've got nearly twenty four million dollars left in cap space. But their key need going into this draft is obviously the quarterback position. Okay. But we're not focused on the quarterback position right now because this isn't about the draft. This is what the Bears did prior to the draft. And their argument is that they've set that because by releasing Justin Fields, they've set it up to, to uh, bring in a quarterback that is going to be their new signal caller. They don't have the disruption of Justin Fields. Being there, it's just going to be Caleb Williams' team. And then, or on the off chance that they go and get Drake May, it'll be his team. But of course, we all know Caleb Williams is going to be going to Chicago. They give the overall score to the Chicago Bears of an A plus this offseason. Okay. That's a, that's a really, I mean, when you're in school and you get an A, it's like a big deal, but A pluses are just not given out often. The Bears get an A plus for that. I do like what the Bears did. Uh, I thought the Bears did a very good job this offseason, but giving them an A plus just seems pretty like that's a big score. Okay, so what are the Bears looking at in this year's draft? They've traded away, you know, for, they traded for draft capital in the past to get what they've got this year. They've got two first rounders and they happen to be in the top 10. They got a number one and a number nine. Okay, so remains to be seen. Do they add another receiver at that ninth pick or do they use that and trade back and add more draft capital? Because as it stands right now, they've only got four picks, two first rounders, a third and a fourth. That's it. That's all the bears are looking at, but that's big. Okay. Don't hear me wrong when I say that, but they've only got four picks. So it wouldn't surprise me if the bears trade that number nine for extra draft capital there. Okay. So anyways, the bears get an A plus for what they did this off season. I find that grade to be pretty high. Okay. So let's take a look at the defending NFC North. Uh, you know, let's take a look at the lines. Okay. So they were the champions last year. The Packers are looking to dethrone them this year. I think if you start reading uh, lines, social media out there, they happen to think that the that the Packers are just right at their heels and they may overtake them this year. So 
I happen to feel that they certainly will. The Lions team is a, is a very good team. Okay, so what did they do this offseason? Key additions for them was, and they got they went out and got an edge rusher and Marcus Davenport, um, and then they got um, cornerback Amik Robinson. So Robertson, that's who they went and got. Okay, so key losses for them was C.J. Gardner Johnson. A lot of Lions fans out there did not like that guy. Um, he was their safety last year, if you remember. Um, and and then they also lost Josh Reynolds. If you saw last year's NFC Championship game against San Francisco, Josh Reynolds dropped two key fourth town pa- passes. So I'm sure the Lions fans are just welcoming the loss of Josh Reynolds there. So the Lions have a, a ton of cap space remaining. They've got $28 million in cap space remaining. But that's all. It was a pretty quiet off season. I feel for the Lions, they really didn't go out and do a whole lot, but Bleacher Report seems to really like what the Lions did or did not do, and they gave the Lions an A+. So that's two back-to-back A-pluses for the NFC North teams. Let's take a look at what the Lions are looking at for the draft. They've got a first-rounder at the 29th pick. Of course, they're looking to add that defensive back with that pick. they got a second, a third, a fifth, a two six, and a seventh. Okay. So they've got, uh, you know, uh, just the normal amount of picks for the most part there that you're looking at for, for the Lions. But again, I'm super shocked. And maybe you guys are or are not shocked by that grade. I think that is a very aggressive grade. Again, there, if you go through Bleacher Report's list, they, they didn't hand out like hardly any A pluses. And they happen to hand two A pluses within our division which I found to be very aggressive with that. Okay, so let's take a look at the Minnesota Vikings. What did the Vikings do this offseason? Well, what we know they did do or didn't do is they didn't sign Kirk Cousins. Okay, so whether we feel that's a good move or not, at the end of the day, the Vikings, they didn't overpay for Cousins. They thought that that was a very good thing that they didn't because they are kind of welcoming this uh, rebuilding mode that is happening there in Minnesota, but they feel that by doing that, uh, that really allowed for Minnesota to set themselves up very nicely going into this year's draft. And we're going to get into that here in a second, but key losses for the Vikings, of course, like I just mentioned, Kirk Cousins, Greg Joseph, of course, they lost their kicker and Dre Joseph. He goes to Green Bay. That is I like that move a lot. Yes, he and Anders Carlson had similar numbers last season, but Greg Joseph is that veteran guy. I don't think he's missing those, you know, key situation, uh, you know, extra points, uh, you know, chip shot field goals that maybe uh, Anders Carlson did um, last season, especially towards the tail end. They lost wide receiver KJ Osborne, and then they also lost Daniel Hunter, which is huge. But what did they do? They went out and added a younger version of that in Jonathan Greenard. They set, they signed him, uh, I think it was a four-year, $76 million deal. So that is a huge chunk of change to be thrown at. I think he's the 11th highest paid defensive lineman out there. They also went and got Shaq Griffin, cornerback, there. So they added a little bit of beef on their defense. Um, they shored up some things there. Uh, so overall, they gave the Minnesota Vikings – a grade of a B. Okay. They get a B. So bears get an A plus lines, get an A plus, And then the Minnesota Vikings got a B with that. Obviously I didn't mention their key addition. They lose Alexander Madsen and then they gain Aaron Jones Packers, Aaron Jones. He's not getting any younger. He's going to be 31 this year. He's going to be good there for a year, maybe two years tops in Minnesota. But again, Sad to lose Aaron Jones there, but uh, I thought, you know, I thought the Packers handled that fine. And there's going to be a lot of people out there that do not agree with me um, when it comes to that. So let's take a look at what the Minnesota Vikings are looking at in regards to, you know, what their picks are this upcoming draft. Okay, so let's take a look. They've got two first rounders. Again, there's the rumors that they're going to be coupling that 11th to 23rd pick to move up and take your either J.J. McCarthy or, um, you know, somebody else. But at the end of the day, it's I think they really want J.J. McCarthy there. Um, Jaden Daniels is the guy that they really want, but 
they're going to have to give up a lot to get that high in the draft. Um, anyways, they got the 11th and the 23rd rumors that they're going to be offloading that they got. Then they don't pick to the fourth. They got two fourths, two fifths, two sevenths and a six. Okay. So Minnesota is set up pretty nicely in the draft. Um, they obviously are in a rebuilding mode there. So what did they give the Packers? Let's take a look at what the Packers got from, um, as far as a grade level goes, from Bleacher Report. So when it comes to key additions and key losses, I think the Packers handled themselves very good in this draft. I mean, in this offseason. Okay, so... They went out. Of course, they lost Aaron Jones. They added a younger Josh Jacobs. I like the move. I really do. I am sad to see Aaron Jones go because the dude ran like a beast at the end of the season, but that's because he had fresh legs. He sat six weeks prior due to injury. Josh Jacobs, of course, he's known for, for having some health issues as well, but I really think Josh Jacobs, there's a lot of people out there that think that's a slight upgrade just because of his age. Okay, so is Aaron Jones pound for pound a better running back? Yes, than Josh Jacobs. However, it's not like, man, oh my gosh, we lost Aaron Jones and now we've got nobody. We've got Josh Jacobs, dude. Josh Jacobs is one of the better running backs he's proved to be over some time in the NFL. And then they added Greg Joseph, a much needed kicker there. And the, the biggest acquisition for the Packers, Xavier McKinney. Okay, this is the best safety out there. In free agency, the Packers go and they sure him up. They get him. I am super pumped to see what he does in Halfley's system. Key losses for the Packers. David Bakhtiari, that should be in a key addition there because they added cap space by losing him. Devondre Campbell, again, a key addition because they added cap space there. Um, I don't see that as a loss. Devondre Campbell, he, he, he disappointed big time last season. And then you add... Um, obviously his cap space there and you, you, so Quay Walker and then whatever they get in the draft, they got five picks in the first in the top 100. So I think they're, they're looking for speed. They're looking to somebody to fit, uh, Jeff Halfley system. Campbell is not that guy. They lose Runyon, but you know, he was a backup anyways. They lose Darnell Savage. That is a loss. And then Jonathan Owens, you know, I, I like Jonathan Owens, but you know, you can replace that guy in the draft. The Packers. And here's key. They added cap space. They had they were cap poor. They've got $21.4 million remaining as it stands. And they can use that to go and restructure a Jordan Love contract. I think the Packers, um, I'm not giving them an A plus, but I think the Packers certainly deserve better than what Bleacher Report gave them, which is a B minus. So in as a whole in the NFC North, they've got two A pluses going to the Bears and to the Lions, which I thought were, you know, the Lions were very quiet in what they did, but they somehow loved that. I thought the Packers, they did what they typically don't do. They went out and signed some big name free agents. They spent the money, but then they also added money because they law they get they cut some guys that were just kind of dead space like. Um, David Bakhtiari on, on on their team. So they added cap space as well as signed your job. They lose Aaron Jones to get Josh Jacobs, they get McKinney, but yet they get a B minus a B minus. Somebody explained that to me. I think they should have gotten an A an A, maybe an A minus. If you're going to like grade an A minus, I thought what Brian Gutekunst did was absolutely brilliant. So let's take a look at what the Packers, of course, we already know what their picks are, but for the sake of keeping consistent, they've got a first rounder at the 25th, uh, two seconds, two thirds, a fourth. So they got five picks in the top 100. There's rumors that the Packers are going to be trading up to go and get somebody if they do or don't remains to be seen. But yet at the same time, they can't add 11 guys. Now that's what they've got. They've got 11 guys in this year's draft. So the Packers are either going to be trading some of those picks for future 2025 picks. But either way, leave your comments. Let me know what you think. I am super frustrated. I'm super upset about that because I think the Packers deserve way more respect than a B-. Go Pack Go.